All these people, but the that's mostly the red poppies. Do you remember how many poppies, Mom? Oh, that's amazing. Do you like that? It's really moving. No, it's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's so amazing. I think that one is for each person. What are they made of? Uh, the ceramics. And uh, in the UK, we can get to buy them. Made by this um, potter in uh, Yorkshire and the So they've got a huge production. They're still making them. Yeah. And by. Uh, Each poppy is made from ceramic by hand by some 60 different. We're in London! Mom and I made it to London safely, so a little stressfully. But we finally got here. We are now walking around the Tower of London, um, looking at everything. It's a little, uh, little like almost drizzly rain, but not quite yet. And Mom's waiting in line for the crown jewels. I'm gonna go hop in line with her uh, in a little bit, but I'm walking around taking pictures in the meat. So, first of all, here's the line. And the problem is because you hide the time, no one wants to take pictures. And then up and around the building, like through one of those in line for a ride kind of things. So, here's Mom. Listening to an audio guide. Here's a cannon. Incredible tower fortress. It's so cool and so beautiful. And so ancient medieval, which is my favorite. So I'm having a good time. Um, like I said, a little stressful getting here, but mostly because we just ended up with the wrong directions. But we got to ride the Eurostar coming over, which was super fun. And guys, I know I haven't uh, done a vlog piece in a while, but life is crazy. I mostly have just been doing homework and papers and studying for exams and tests and <laughs> then it'll be fine. Um, there's a blue lamppost. After this, we have tickets to go to the Warner Brothers Studios where they filmed most of the Harry Potter stuff, including walking through the Great Hall, seeing the green screen where they did all of the uh, flying brooms and quidditch scenes. Um, we'll get to go in the potions room. We'll get to go um, get butterbeer. They have real butterbeer. Yes. And there's a creature creation shop on how they made all of the different uh, mythical creatures. I don't know. It's going to be really cool. I'm super excited. Um, man in uniform. Sorry. <laughs> Detour. They're always fun. But anyway, it's going to be really fun. Hopefully I'll be able to take pictures and videos of that, but I don't know if I will for sure. So in the meantime, I'm trying to get other stuff too. Um, I have my camera, but don't tell mom. It's the, the battery's only half charged. Whoops. Forgot to do that, but it's all right. Um, but mom, if you watch this, oops, but I'm sure it'll work out just fine. Plus I have this camera and I can take pictures in it, and I have my phone, and my iPod, and my iPad. All in one little bag. I think that's pretty good. Anyway, kind of tempted by the ice cream, but I get butterbeer tonight, so I'm not going to do ice cream. Butterbeer! Oh my gosh, so we just took the uh, underground to get over here, which was kind of nice. It's better than the metro, uh, but it's cool anyway. But we stopped to get something to eat, and we got this sandwich that had ham and cheese and egg in it, and it was so good. It was like eating Eggs Benedict in a sandwich. And then we went to, uh, what else did we get? Oh, we got this like gourmet mac and cheese box for the two of us and um, it was delicious cheese and obviously little noodles and then some kind of little green herb and bacon bits and something else um, 
cauliflower. There was cauliflower in it. We kept eating it going, yeah. what the? Oh, and it was really funny. Like, it just didn't feel like it went in it, but it actually ended up being really good. Plus, it was covered in cheese sauce. So, anyway, I should probably go back to mom. But uh, here's the rest of the wine. The entrance is uh, under the clock tower there. But this goes back and forth and back and forth. It's just crazy. Obviously, we started all the way at the back. And now, where's mom now? Oh, she's right there. Yeah, I think you have to be out of your mind. Where'd she go? Right there. <laughs> I think she's listening to the audio guide early so we can get through and get out and uh, just keep going because we're kind of on a time schedule. Bye! Mom and I just finished looking at the crown jewels and going through the gift shop and it was incredible. They were so beautiful and it was really interesting. The jewels themselves um, were displayed in a single straight line in a set of cases and they had moving sidewalks on both sides so that you couldn't just stand there and keep looking. You just had to keep on moving through. <laughs> Look at it and keep going. Look at it and keep going. Which I thought was really clever. Anyway, it was really, really beautiful. They were so cool. They have a spoon in there that's 800 years old. It's the oldest thing that's in there. Well, from the original collection. It was so cool. Anyway, Mom and I are getting ready to go find the exit and head to Harry Potter. Okay, everybody. Just a little warning. If you plan on going to the Warner Brothers studio and seeing any of the Harry Potter stuff, don't watch the following clips. Bye! This is what we like to call in the film industry a hot set, which means that it is ready for filming and absolutely perfect. Hold on, I'm, I'm all stuck on this. So please, whip out your cameras and take a look at this amazing set. Now that you've had a few moments to have a look around, you may have noticed some of the incredible detail that you didn't notice in the film series. For example, we have the murals on the front and back walls. Now these were hand painted by our scenic painters way back when for the first films and have been left to age under our studio lights. And if you look very carefully, you can actually see one of them on Dumbledore's chair. But we also have in front of me our, our great uh, our table steps with the Halloween feast from the Philosopher's Stone. Now when they were filming, they would often use real food, especially to start off with. And that was great for the first day, it smelled delicious, it tasted delicious, but then after about three days, it started to get a bit with it. So what they then had to do was use resin to create what looked like food. So take a look around, see if you can work out which is real and which isn't. But from some details that you can see here to one that you definitely can't, can anybody notice what is missing from this great hall? Anybody? Anybody? Take a look up. Yes, that's right, it is the ceiling. Now, if you remember correctly, the ceiling of the Great Hall is enchanted. And it would have been a bit tricky for us to get all the clouds and stars in here. So those had to be added magically using computers. Although a ceiling model was created though, and this helped the visual effects team create those conditions. And you'll be able to see that just around the corner in a few moments. But now from something that you can't see to something that you definitely can. If anybody wants to do the floor that they're standing on, a good part of the Oh, some very good sampling there. Yes, this is real floor flagstone. It is the type of flooring that you can see in castles up and down the country. Now, early on, filmmakers realised that this set would have to go undergo a lot of wear and tear. Given that up to any one time, there could be well over 400 cast crew and extras in here. And who could forget some of the most iconic scenes that this set play goes to? For example, in the Philosopher's Stone, when you have Professor Bill racing through here, surrounding Charm in the Dungeon, Charm in the Dungeon, and collapsing just about where you are there, sir. And also, what about the first time we see it, the sorting ceremony? But now, speaking of the sorting ceremony, we can't be in the Great Room without speaking of our four houses of Hogwarts. So, by way of whoop, cheer, or scream, do we have any Hufflepuffs in today? Yes, we've got one over there, that's more than usual. Over here, we have our Hufflepuff section. In particular, we have the costume. Cedric Diggory from the Trial Wizard Tournament in the Goblet of Life, worn by Robert Patterson. Please do come out, ladies. But now, do we have any Raven Claws in today? Oh, and they're wearing blue. Excellent. Over here we have our Raven Claws section. Over on the far left we have the costume of the Grey Lady from the third film. And she's still talking to me. In the middle we have the costume of the Shirley Chan on the left hand side, that's it. Uh, that is Harry's very first form, which is. And directly ahead of me, we have the costume of Moaning Burton, oh, right. also the girls' bathroom. And I want to be clear, she's actually Ravenclaw. 
And now, do we have any Slytherins in today? Ooh, yes, the door is that way. No, I'm joking, you can stay, we welcome everybody here. Yes, the Slytherin section is just over to my right hand side. And in the middle things. we have the costume of Draco Malfoy, worn by Tom Felton in the Order of the Phoenix. Now we know it's the Order of the Phoenix, because if you look closely on his left hand side, he's wearing his Inquisitorial badge. But we can't be talking about our House of Hogwarts without talking about our House of our Heroes. So can I get an almighty roar for Gryffindor? Right here is costume from the Deathly Hallows Part 2, the only man to defeat our Horcrux while wearing knitwear. And <laughs> further over, we have this is a very dear costume here, a prize to the tour. This is the first ever set of Wizarding Robes worn by Daniel Radcliffe in the Philosopher's Stone. Come on, get Speaking of the first films though, Daniel, Rupert and Emma would have walked straight through those doors down there, down this hallway like you all have done today, to come up to the teacher's table, be sorted into their houses and greeted by their professors. Now, in particular, we have this guy. Can anybody tell me who this rather large fellow is? Hagrid! Excellent! And who played Hagrid? Bobby Coltrane! Bobby Coltrane! Excellent! Now, Bobby Coltrane is a big guy, measuring at about six foot two, but he's not quite big enough to play a half giant. So what we then had to do was get an ex-England rugby player in by the name of Martin Bateman, who measured in at about six foot ten to play his size level. But even then, he still wasn't big enough. So we had to put stilts into his shoes, we padded out his costume, and we placed on top of his own an animatronic head which looked just like Robbie Coltrane. And you'll be able to see that in just a, a well later on in the tour in our creatures so workshop cool. department. But so unfortunately, funny. ladies and gentlemen, your time in the Great Hall is coming to an end. But do not worry, we still have so much for you to see today. Just a few housekeeping rules before you get going. Anybody with a digital audio guide, your tour will start directly outside of these uh, doors. Just on the director's board, please look out for the tour icons as you walk around. Now, anybody who's got a passport with them today, you've got a passport? Yeah, you do. Excellent. Uh, the, you have got six stamps for you to collect around your tour. We've got four in this house. Your ball costumes, dress robes, and the infamous dress. That's so pretty. And of course, the ice tables and sculptures. Look at that. to actually make a sculpture to make it look like ice. It's so cool. And all of those cups have to look like they have drinks in them. <laughs> and Ron's dress robes. Yule ball. And then of course, the table of desserts. Yeah, all your things. We have lots of things. I have a whole nother card. Okay. Now where do I want to go? Oh gosh, look at this ice cream. We're not to the boys' dormitory yet. The brand new starting out on our adventure, jeans and shirt. The we've been on a few adventures and surviving shirts and jeans. And the um, are we certainly going to make another day? <laughs> All burnt up and uh, destroyed. Jeans, <laughs> sure. And then, of course. Oh. Gloves, shoes, and hat. Oh, so fun. Look all that crazy. Feet long. Yeah, but that chair is only probably a foot and a half tall, maybe two feet, 
and the room just gets tinier and tinier. They filmed standing at the very front of it so you could see this wonky looking hallway. This is where that broom would have come out and swept the hall. We would have had the maid in the space. Forced perspective. Good call, Mom. Look at that up there. <laughs> Random pieces from the dock arts. <laughs> That's uh, Neville's grandmother's outfit on Snape. <laughs> That's so cool. Lupin. No, I want to. Look at these books stacked up like this. And look, Lorelin. Crew boats. Armor. What, Mom? Oh, look at those. Oh my gosh. The Gnome Racing Championship? I didn't even know there was such a thing. The Quidditch World Cup. Bravery Against Fantastic Beasts Award. That's a huge one. Ocean's classroom. Oh my goodness. Remember all Rita's key to them. I don't think it's a good thing. No, I don't think it's More than 500 oh, jars and containers. Look at it stirring. This one be the one that's not brand new. Could it be blood on the ground? 
Y'all should smell it in here. It's it's like it's real. It is real ingredients. A lot of it is very very real, and some of it is very very gross. <laughs> There's uh, alchemy inscriptions. This room grew each and every year for every set, the time they came in here because more and more seemed to need it to be added to the room. And yet, this didn't even come around until the third movie because the, the first movie, they said, um, all the filmings that were done in the quote unquote potions room were done on set. On site. This is the set. They're on a stick, see? It's really long. The secrets are incredibly time consuming and technical to achieve. So we develop the sequences through Look at this. animations, crude cartoons, and This whole thing put together to make this room fly. The kids sitting on it. Carefully coordinated shots of people on brooms. Oh, 
look up. Over there. Meet Nagini. Well, it's a boy, but what's his real name? Does he have one? Tiki? Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-seven years old, eighteen foot long, reticulated python. The one and only snake they used in the whole film. Besides the CGI one at the beginning. My audio guide was saying that for forty hours they videoed or no, 40 kittens they videoed for like five days. Tons of little kittens, 40 little kittens, playing with things, dressed up in things, doing things. And then when they were done, they let them all get adopted to people without telling them that they had been in Harry Potter. So there are 40 kitty cats out there somewhere that were Harry Potter stars and their owners don't know it. Umbridge's office, the only pink office in the entire set. Duh. <laughs> so, oh, look at her shoes. And you got killed? Well, it's been a while since I watched the first one. They're so big. Your mom next to them. paintings that just came out phenomenal. These are not pictures, these are paintings. <laughs> 